Hey, what's up guys, Ryan here, back for another video. Today, I've got an awesome set review for you guys. Today, we're reviewing the LEGO Ninjago City Docks set. This set is based on the LEGO Ninjago movie and was released in 2018. The set retails for £199.99 and has 3,553 pieces in it. It also comes with a great lineup, 13 minifigures. I can't wait to jump in and review this set, so let's go. Okay, let's take a look at the figures. Firstly, We've got Mistake. She comes with a cup and a teapot. We've got a very, very nice torso. No leg printing, unfortunately. I feel like this figure could have benefited from the leg printing, but oh well. A nice face and cool hair as well. Some nice back printing and thankfully no double-sided face. Next, we've got Dareth. He's got really nice torso printing and leg printing. Works really, really well together. He's got a cool face and a very nice hair piece as well. They're very suave. A nice golden dragon on his back and no double-sided face as well. Next, we've got Lil Nelson. Obviously he's young, so he's got the small white legs. A very nice torso though, and a cool face. I think he's got Neville Longbottom's hair in a slightly different tone. He's got this really cool bandage accessory on his hand, making him look like he's had a hand injury. Very snazzy. He's got some very nice Master Wu back printing, and no double-sided face. Next up, we've got Lloyd. It's his standard figure for the Lego Ninjago movie sets. Pretty boring, but if you haven't seen it already, he's got very, very nice leg printing, working with his torso printing nicely. He's got the hat and neckerchief combination, as you can see. That's what his face looks like without a neckerchief on it. He's got some nice back printing and a double-sided face, as well as this nifty sword that he's got as well. Next up, we've got Betsy and Baby. She's got a nice little bottle for the baby, and the baby, of course. Isn't it cute? She's got some nice torso printing, no leg printing, unfortunately, but for this figure, I feel like it's all right. She's kind of gone for the all green style anyway. She's got some nice back printing and a double-sided face. Next up, we've got Runda. His figure looks really, really good. Some nice leg printing and torso printing working together really, really well. He comes with a couple of oars as well. He's got a pretty standard face and a standard hairpiece. Some really nice back printing and not a double-sided face. Next up, we've got Chan Kong Sang. This is another awesome looking figure. Some really nice torso printing and leg printing working together really well. He's got sleeveless as you can see as well. Carries a hundred dollar bill in his hand. He's got a pretty standard face and standard hairpiece and has some back printing and a double-sided face. Next up, We've got Runja. She's got an awesome figure. As you can see, some torso and leg printing working really well together. She's got a very nice hat like Master Wu as well, but in a nice sandy orange color. She's got this really nifty accessory that makes it look like she's carrying some fish on a pole. Obviously the pole is just strapped to her back, but it creates a really, really nice effect. And despite the fact you never really see the back printing on this figure, she still has it. Once you remove her big accessory. Really, really cool. Next up, We've got Run Me, another awesome looking figure with some also leg printing and torso printing working well together. She comes with a hammer and a chisel. This chisel piece is awesome. The set comes with a spare one as well, so you get two in the set. She's got the same hair piece as Mistake, but in black instead of gray. Some nice back printing, and unfortunately she's got a double-sided face that you can see from under the hair. Really, really annoying. And that's what it looks like when the hair's removed. And even if you use this face as the front one, the other one still pokes out a little bit underneath. Really, really annoying for me, but maybe I'm just being picky. Next up, We've got Cole, a pretty nice figure here, some nice torso printing and leg printing. His accessory is awesome though, a little mobile phone. You can even see it has the charge and the signal on it. Really, really cool. He's got the same usual Cole face and he's got a really, really nifty hair piece as well. Some understated back printing and the other side of his face, but his hair piece covers it very well. Now onto the bad guys. First up, we've got Private Puffer. This figure is absolutely awesome. I love these villains in the movie and I'm so happy this set includes one of them. He's got this really cool fish chainsaw weapon. Very strange. He's got this brilliant puffer fish headpiece with a little visor on it, as you can see. Some really nice military-like torso printing and lead printing. He's got this awesome armor jetpack scuba tank kind of thing. That's what his face looks like without the puffer fish on his head. And he's got some nice back printing and no double-sided face. And that's what the puffer fish looks like from behind. This is an awesome, awesome figure. And secondly for the bad guys and the final figure of the set, we've got our favorite four-armed foe, Garmadon. This figure comes in quite a lot of sets, but I haven't managed to get him yet. So I'm really, really happy this set came with him. Obviously, a very, very unique figure. He's got some leg printing, torso printing on both of his torsos. That's what it looks like from behind. And he's got no back printing on his head. This is what the torsos look like separately. That extra bit coming down from the top torso is actually built into the torso, so you can't take it off. So these two torsos are as they come in the set. Looks awesome. I'm really, really happy with this figure. I think he's such a good enemy. And of course, getting four katanas in the set is pretty awesome as well. So that's all the figures. Let's take a look at the set. Okay, so let's take a look at this massive set. First of all, let's take a quick look at Runda's boat. It's a really, really nice little build. You can see here that this canopy lifts up. 
So you can easily put a figure in or take a figure out. Really, really nice. In this little sealed compartment here, you've got a couple of Ninjago trading cards. You can see here that this is for Garmadon and Zane. Really, really nice little hidden treasure there. And at the very front, you've got a nice compass. This is a snazzy little build and ties in well with the water theme from the set. Very, very cool. This water effect is simply mesmerizing. It looks so, so good. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a pain to build, putting down all these two by one translucent blue tiles, but the look at the end made it worth it. You've got a nice sign here saying that you're in the city of Ninjago, as well as this little statue. You've got this wooden walkway over the water, which looks really, really good. And then that takes you to this little wooden crane. Of course, you can turn it and you can lower it. If you're curious, inside this box, there's a couple of jewels. I'll hang that back up. If you go around here, you can see you come to a few barrels underneath the staircase. Again, if you're curious about the contents of these barrels, you've got a skeleton head, four cookies, and a can of something. Some pretty nice pieces in there. If we keep going around here, you can see you come to a little food stand. In here, you can see you've got a nice bit of meat hanging, which you can also turn to make it cook evenly using this little turner. And around here, you've got a little food stall selling apples, cherries, and bananas. It also has a nice little play feature where you can tip everything out like this. Oh dear. I'm not really too fussed about play features, but both of these are quite nice and hidden. So they're just nice little additions. Also, the detailing on the roofs of these two places is really, really cool. Looks really, really good. And that roof is made out of spades, which is an absolutely genius little building technique. Really, really cool. Over here, you can see you've got some stone steps leading to the water and kind of little cave through there. That's mainly used as a space to store the boat, like this. You can see this stone staircase goes up and reaches an intersection between these two buildings. We'll get to them in a bit. This stone pathway down here leads to the back of the set, which looks like this. In my opinion, this looks just as good as the front. A very, very different vibe, but I think it looks awesome nonetheless. This is where the stone pathway leads us to. If you go through there, you get to Run Maze sculpting area. I'll show you guys that in a minute. And if you go down here, it doesn't really lead to anything. You've got a nice fishing rod here that's caught a crab, and there's some fish in a barrel there. This leaf here is just on a joint, so you can easily move it out. And that just leads to a dark little dead end there. I suppose some characters could have some secret meetings through there. Let's close that back up to keep it secret. And this is the top of the stone staircase we saw earlier. So this set is mainly split into three groups of buildings. You've got this group here, this group here, and this group here. Let's start by looking at this group of buildings. First of all, on the outside, you've got a really cool looking telescope here and a nice ladder going up to the second floor. One of the things I love most about this set is how easy the buildings are to remove and access, like so. <laughs> As you can see, it's just connected by four single studs. So it's secure, but very, very easy to remove. And then when you take a look at the buildings themselves, they're even easier to access. You can just simply slide it off. So this is the first room we'll take a look at. It's a really, really cool kind of map traveling room. You can see that you've got a nice globe here that spins. In here, you've got a book, which contains a very nice trading card. You've got a couple of maps on the wall and a map on the table there, along with the sextant. For such a small room, they've done a really, really good job of cramming a lot of detail in here. You've got a nice open door here, and on the other side, you've got this really, really cool sliding door. So that's the first room in this tower. Let's take a look at the second room. You've got some really nice detail on the roof, kind of like a signal tower. And again, it's so, so easy to remove. Inside here, you've got what I believe is a tea room. You've got a bunch of shelves at the back there, some scales there, which are actually just handcuffs. Very clever use of a piece there. And next to the window, you've got some newspapers. These are for the Ninjargon. And the headline reads, Ninja identities are a mystery. Of course, referring to the six ninjas. It's connected to a smooth white tile at the back as well to make it look thicker, which is a really nice effect. This ladder here connects to the bottom level. You've got a nice air conditioning unit at the top and you've got some more grates to stand on when you access the shop. And you've got a nice simple door here. On the other side, you've got a few more Ninjargon papers there, all in a rack. Very, very funky. And you've got a railing here with some colorful pieces on it and a door on the other side of the shop as well. On the outside, you've also got this very cool poster here and you've got this very, very nice translucent counter here, which tracks how many days there have been since the city was last attacked. Unfortunately, this isn't printed, this is a sticker. This set has a lot of stickers, but I'm not that fussed about that. As you can see, the ladder connects seamlessly. So that right there is the first section of buildings. Let's put them back. Again, nice and easy to replace. Now let's look at the middle section. First of all, just a quick look here. This is behind the fruit shop on the ground floor. As you can see, there's no detail in here, but there's still enough space to put a couple of figures. So that's a nice bit of extra storage room. You've also got an ax there on the wall to cut the meat. Very nice. Okay, so let's look at this house. This roof is the only part of the set that's slightly difficult to remove. Because the roof here is made out of flaps, you can't really pick it up using this area. So you have to remove it using the area just under the golden frogs, like this. 
This area of the house also moves out. So you can see here inside, you've got a TV displaying some Ninjago program. You've got a sink and you've got a little cooker with some cooking in it. Looks like cookies. And you've got a really nice little bunk bed set up here. The top bunk bed is easy to remove just by lifting it off. And you can see underneath, you've got a picture of Johnny Thunder, I think. So that's a nice little reference. So this is just a nice little house here, really. Really nice and compact, but also packed with detail. On the outside, you've got this big wheel here, which kind of acts as a window. You've got the Joker's hair here, which is used as a hanging plant. Again, a really, really cool use of a piece. And you've got the sliding doors again out here and you've got a satellite dish for the TV really really nifty little one room building there the roof on this looks really really cool and you've also got a couple of spare studs up here so you can have some characters standing on the roof potentially Garmadon fighting Lloyd so that right there is the second building now let's take a look at the third and final tower Ooh. First of all, let's take a quick look at Run May's sculpting workshop. First of all, you've got a really nice little grey skeleton here, which makes it look like she's carving a character out of stone. Really, really nice. And over on this side, you've got a few stone figures, a few stone chickens, and another one of those little stone buildings that was used at the front of the set. Right here. Again, I think they've used the space really, really well in this little building. And you've only got four studs connecting the building above, so it's very, very easy to remove. So let's take a look at it. Again, super easy to remove. So in here, you've got Dareth's dojo. You've got another air conditioner outside. Inside, you've got a couple of katanas and a couple of shurikens on this wall. A nice scroll on this wall, kind of showing some fighting moves. A couple more katanas and a couple more shurikens on this wall. And you've got some pictures here and some awards on this wall. Two golden statues and a silver fist, it looks like. Again, I really, really like how they've used the space in this room. It really, really does feel like a dojo, even though the room is fairly small. And you've got the staircase connected to the room as well, which definitely helps make everything fit together even better. And finally, we've got the rest of the building. First of all, you've got a really nice pig balloon up here. A very snazzy little build this was. It looks really, really good. Again, this roof just slides off nice and easily. First of all, let's have a look outside. Obviously the staircase from the level below connects up to here perfectly. So you can walk around here and access the vending machine. You can use this vending machine to buy some drinks and it works really, really well. If you push in this $100 bill, a drink will come out like this. Yummy. It's a really, really cool way that they've done it. And if you take your dollar bill out and put it back in, you can buy another drink. And it's easy to refill as well. All you have to do is drop them down here like this and you're refilled. In here, you can see you've got a little arcade. You've got a really nice little sweet dispenser build here and you've got a couple of video games here as well, which can easily be removed. First of all, you've got some kind of platform fighting game with a joystick and secondly, you've got another kind of platformer game which seems to have a joystick and a button. A couple of really fun builds here. Really, really enjoyed these. And yes, unfortunately, these are stickers. Can't have everything. Outside here, you can also see that you've got an advert on the wall. If you remove this lock, you can simply slide it out and if you want to get some more adverts, you can push this in and they'll fire out the front. So yeah, some really, really cool play features in this side. This is definitely my favorite side of the set. And if we put the roof back on, we can replace it like this. Even though everything is super easy to remove, the set still feels really, really solid. Obviously, if you're transporting this set, you're gonna to need to remove all of the rooms that aren't exactly connected by studs, but that's fine. As long as you remember that, this set is an absolute joy. One little criticism I do have about this set though, if you look here on the corners, you can see that they curl up slightly. This is because they've used a very, very thin base plate for this set. And because this corner in particular doesn't have any bricks holding it down, it's curled up quite a lot. This corner over here also has the same problem, but not quite as bad. Whereas the two corners at the back don't really have this problem at all because there are bricks very, very close to the corner that are holding it down. This was a slight oversight by the designers in this set, but I guess they had to sacrifice something to make a good looking set like this. Oh well, I won't complain too badly. So there you have it. That right there is the Ninjago City Docks set. Overall, I'm gonna give this set a 9.5 out of 10. This was such a tough call. It was so close to being a 10 out of 10, but just a couple of minor issues held me back. The figure selection in this set is brilliant. The only faults I can have are very, very minor. For instance, not having leg printing on all the figures, the fact that a lot of the figures have reused faces from other sets, and the fact that one of the figures has a double-sided face that you can see from beneath her hair. Those are all very minor though, and if those were the only issues, I probably would've given this set a 10 out of 10 overall. The thing that pulled it down to a 9.5 is this. I mentioned it in the review, but this was quite an oversight by the designers, I think. The thin base plates have always had a tendency to ride up on the corners, and the way to mitigate this was to build bricks around the corner in order to kind of stabilize it and keep it down. And the designers did that really well in this set for the back two corners. And for this corner over here, pretty good. But they just seem to miss out on this corner. <laughs> It's a real shame because I find it annoying enough to knock this set down to a 9.5 instead of a 10. Ignoring that and the very minor minifigure issues, this set is incredible. Obviously it's not produced anymore so I had to pick this up on Bricklink for a fair amount more than what it retails for, but honestly I think it's worth every penny. 
One of the biggest issues that I find with loads of buildings in one set is that they can be quite difficult to access. This set has resolved that so well. Every room is so easy to get into. Honestly, it's just so, so good. If any of you guys are into Ninjago and haven't picked this set up, I would hands down recommend it. Obviously, this set also connects to the LEGO Ninjago City set and should connect to the upcoming Gardens of Ninjago City set as well. What do you guys think about this set? If you have it, what do you think of it? If you don't have it, what are you doing? You need to get this set. So, so good. As always, thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.